Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on this webinar about guided reading tips and strategies for beginning readers. This webinar is being recorded and a link to view the webinar will be sent out within a week of this recording so that you can view afterwards if, or if you have to leave early or can't join live. Along with the PDF of Success Starts Early, Reading Conferences with Your Beginning Readers, document by Jennifer Saravalo, which we'll be showcasing today. I'm Katie Potter, the Literacy Specialist at Lee and Lowe. So briefly, I'm going to take us through the agenda on what we're going to be reviewing and discussing today. So first, I'm going to talk a little bit about Lee and Lowe books, and specifically our, our leveled readers and working with beginning readers and the books that we offer. Then I'll go into conferencing with students and talking about qualities of books at levels A, B, and C. Then I'm going to highlight different skills, strategies, and reading behaviors from the document. Those include using the pictures and text to read, retelling, summarizing, and synthesizing, and inferring. Then I'll discuss about English language learners and working on reading with English language learners. Then I'll talk about the conference guides that are available at the end of the PDF and question and answer. So here's a little bit about us at Lee and Lowe Books. So here at Lee and Lowe, we believe that it starts with the right book. And all of our students that we work with or children that we engage with have the right to be in a world that includes them. And oftentimes that starts with the right book. So I have two excerpts from spreads from some of our beloved Bebop titles, Mom is a Painter and Car Wash. And we offer so many different ways that children can see themselves in books and also can experience ways to engage with new content that they may not have experienced before. It's critical for children's development and lifelong passion for reading at such an early age when they can see themselves in books and really identify and engage with what's there. So we were started in 1991 with the mission to publish contemporary diverse stories that all children can enjoy. So that means that our, our motto is about everyone for everyone. We believe, as I just mentioned, that all children have the right to see themselves in books. Then we also have uh, created awards to feature debut authors of color. The New Voices Award was established in 2000, and this is aimed towards children's picture books by writer of color, Native and Indigenous. And in 2010, the New Visions Award for middle grade and YA by exclusively authors of color and authors of, who are Native and indigenous. So we're family owned and operated. Lee and Lowe was co-founded by Philip Lee and Tom Lowe, who you see on the far left hand of the screen. Um, so we are minority owned and we're a family business. And Craig, and, Craig Lowe and Jason Lowe are Tom's sons and they run the company. So now I'm going to talk about guided reading uh, briefly with uh, Bebop books. So Bebop Books, if you're unfamiliar with Bebop Books, they're an exclusive imprint of Lee and Lowe Books that offer leveled books that support literacy learning content. So as you can see on the right, Flora's Box, La Caja de Flor, those are, uh, that's just a sample one of our Bebop Books, and they are going to be predominantly featured in this webinar, um, along with some examples of our, our picture books for older readers or read-alouds, but we're mainly going to be focusing on Bebop books, the level books that are at levels A, B, and C. However, we not only do we have books at levels A, B, and C, we have a full range of levels that support guided reading, shared reading, intervention in whatever setting that you're working with. It doesn't have to be those things, and you don't even have to use the levels if you, if you do not wish or if that doesn't work for your particular role. They just are, they're all available on the website, as you can see. We have the guided reading level, the grade level and interest level that we think that the book is suited for, and then correlation levels. So Bebop Books, we, at Bebop Books, we offer culturally responsive, diverse leveled reading 
And those include relatable characters and themes for early readers that may not necessarily be available in other leveled readers that you see. As a former uh, first grade literacy instructor myself, I was always looking for child-centered books that children, could, that children and students that I worked with could relate to. And that is a big part of Bebop books. Bebop books are also officially leveled by Fantas and Pinnell with DRA and intervention correlations that you can see on the website. And also there are Spanish levels on the website by uh, literacy experts in-house. For example, um, you've seen Flora's Box La Caja de Flor. Flora's Box is leveled at B and the Spanish version is leveled at an A. That's because the Spanish version the is may not necessarily contain the same type of text in the English version, uh, or it could be vice versa. The Spanish version has more complex vocabulary that's offered. So we really take that seriously into account whenever we're leveling the Spanish books. Additionally, we have free downloadable lesson plans on each of the book pages. So if you're looking for a lesson plan, you just type in the book page on the website, and then you can click on the PDF and it's free for you to use and adapt with your students however you see fit. So I also wanted to note that while we are going to be talking about levels, it's important that students should never be referred to as their reading level. It's all about the child's specific reading behaviors and skills that you're working on and they just so happen to be reading at a specific level. They could be reading at several different, they could be engaging with books at several different levels. It all depends on the child's needs. Um, so a range of texts, including additional read-alouds and other books that suit their interest are necessary to reading development um, and are, may not be relegated to their independent or instructional reading level. And I just wanted to make, to make note of that before we get, in, get into it. And we also respect librarians and teachers input on levels as well. Uh, we never put the level on the book um, on any of our leveled readers. They're available for adults on the lesson plan, on the website, but children will, unless you have reading bins in the classroom that the books are sorted into, but the level will not be printed on the actual book. So, to see how Bebop Books fits into your balanced literacy curriculum, I've given some examples here. So we have a picture book biography, The Pot That Juan Built. Uh, this is a book um, that's great for a read aloud um, if you're doing a pottery or ceramic unit in your class or whatever setting you're working in. Then we have a Bebop book called I Make Clay Pots and that's at a level D. So you can use them together. Students can be reading books independently, and then they also connect to read-alouds that you may do as a whole class or in small groups. Additionally, we have a caregiver component because we want to make sure that caregivers and parents and families are involved in students' lives. So if you have uh, parents who speak Spanish in the class, uh, speak Spanish, we have uh, all Bebop books have a Spanish component, and many of our read-alouds and picture books at higher levels also have Spanish components and you can look on the website for more information. Um, but we just wanted, you know, I always like to say these books complement what you're doing in the classroom. You can make them fit into whatever unit that you're working with or whatever curricular program that you happen to be using. They're great additions and complements to diversify your inventory. These are some themes that I wanted to highlight from our Bebop books. So our Bebop books cover a range of themes and they all relate to what children go through on a daily basis. So you, we have culture and heritage where children can see um, their own traditions in books or can learn about them. We have books that appreciate similarities and differences. We have books that are for universal and everyday, books that deal with science, and STEM, and then nonfiction books that could be about food or different routines. So there's a wide range of themes and you can always look on our website for if you're looking for something very specific. Or you can always reach out to us and we can uh, and I can help you find what you're looking for.
So now we're going to dig into the document. Success starts early, reading conferences with your beginning readers by Jennifer Saravallo. So briefly, to provide more context about Jennifer Saravallo, she's a national literacy consultant, speaker, and author of over a dozen books and resources on the teaching of reading and writing, including uh, the New York Times bestseller, The Reading Strategies Book which I, use, I used frequently in my own practice and when I developed the teacher's guides here at Lee and Lowe. So you can read more about her uh, bio in the document, and she's really quite a reputable force um, in the field of literacy and the teaching of reading. So we're really honored to have this document available to, um, to our teachers and librarians and caregivers to learn more about this type of reading, uh, teaching of reading. So the document is broken down into four different sections, which you can see here. So we have what is a conference overview, conferring with readers, teaching resource pages, and conferring record keeping and checklists. And again, these are all aimed at children who are reading books at Fountas and Pinnell levels A, B, and C. So there's quite a lot of content in this document. So you can pick pieces that are relevant to you. You can print out a specific, say you only want the conferring record keeping and checklists, which I'll show you at the end. You can print those out, you can laminate them, you can use whatever you wish to with students. This is a free downloadable PDF that you can use. So feel free to pick whatever you feel is relevant to your work. So first I'm going to go over what is a conference overview. And this gives a uh, gives structure to how conferences should look, uh, or not should look, but could possibly look. And it gives a way for you to organize the way that you approach uh, conferencing with your students. I find, found this really helpful. Again, as I said, I was a former first grade literacy instructor to give you step-by-step -step and concrete instructions on when you're going over to a student and you're about to read. It gives you an idea of how, what you're going to be doing. So first, a one-on-one -on -one conference uh, has the following steps. You, re you first research, you observe, you ask questions, and you listen to the child read. You're simply observing their behavior so that you can figure out what to do in the next steps. Then complement. You reinforce something the child has done well by explicitly naming the strategy or behavior and then offering subsequent praise or, or encouragement. So I'm going to, throughout this, I'm going to give some examples of what happened in my practice. So I would say, I love how you pointed to each word as you read, because children, when they're just starting to, to read, it's helpful when they use their um, finger to work on one-on-one, one-to-one correspondence, or I saw you using the word well to figure out that word. So naming what they're doing, and so that will then aid them in helping them to work on the strategy that they need to focus on. Then you teach. You observed, you complimented, and now you are going to give the child instructions on what, how to proceed next. So you state the strategy that you want the, the reader to work on. And this is basically coaching the student. So you could say, I noticed that this word was tricky for you. Next time when you read, I want you to check, uh, check the picture, then try for the word. That's giving them an idea, okay, I can use the picture to help me figure out the word next time. They use the word well before, but then when they got to a tricky word, they can then use the picture as well. Then you link the two together. You repeat the compliment and the strategy, and then you combine them both. So the student can use their strengths to address what they need to work on. So I love how you were pointing to each word as you read to keep track of the words. Next time, if you get stuck on a word, you can look at the picture to try to figure out the word. So you're combining the strength with the, uh, with the growth. And then this is an example spread from my school at Fountas and Pinnell Level C. So um, the next is group conferences. So group conferences are similar to one-on-one -on -one conferences, except that when you work with a group, you really need to state the purpose of why that group is joining together, because it's possible that this is the beginning of the year, some students may not know each other, so you really need to make them at ease and show them, okay, 
This is why we're reading together. So when I worked with my, uh, with, I had a first grade guided reading, uh, one of my first grade guiding re reading groups, I really wanted them to work on the skill of retelling. So they were really great at decoding and figuring out the words, but they couldn't remember what happened in the story after when I asked them. So I explicitly stated the purpose. I want us to work on talking about what the story is about after we're finished reading. You're all really great at pointing to the words as you read to try to figure out the tricky words when you get to them. In this group, though, we're going to talk about what the book is about after we read. So number two, you complement the group first. They're really good at figuring out the tricky words. Then you're demonstrating the new strategy. You can, you're ha or you're having them figure out why they're working together, and that's to work on talking about what the book is about. And then you work with students in the group as they do their reading work. So that's the format of a group conference. Then you could, um, to add to the strategy, for retelling, you could give them a format, first, next, then, and last. You can come up with different prompting, which I'm going to go into in a little bit about uh, retelling. Lastly, partnership conferences. Again, similar to uh, a one-on-one -on -one conference, when you're listening to both of the students reading and um, you're observing their interactions together. Then you complement what they do, uh, you reinforce what they've done well by explicitly naming the strategy each time and offering this, uh, that praise. And then you state the strategy that you want the children to work on in their partnership, and then you encourage them to continue to practice the new skill while also using their strength. So next, we are going to go into uh, conferring with readers. So. This is when I'm going to be talking about the different uh, qualities of the books at levels A, B, and C, and then the skills that you could be working on in those conferences with students. So when you're conferring at level A, and again, I'm going to be showing all of these different spreads from uh, Bebop books at the different levels that I'm going to be talking about here, and this one is Family Picnic. So the skills and behaviors at level A it's moving from left to right across the page, it's a simple concept of print, one-to-one -one matching when children say one word for every word that's on the page, using pictures and text to read, utilizing the illustrations to help them figure out words, reading sight words automatically and accurately. In this case, in Family Picnic, laugh is a sight word because it's hard, it's, you cannot figure out how to say it phonetically, so it has to be Children will know it as a sight word. Retelling, summarizing, and synthesizing. Uh, it should be a synthesis or a summary of a story as opposed to going line by line um, and using pictures and text to make meaning and then inferring. So when a reader takes what's in a story and then puts it in together with prior knowledge to, make an, uh, to form an idea or make a prediction. So these are all the different skills and behaviors that you can work on at level A. And of course you can work on many more, but these are just the ones that are highlighted in the document and provided more detail about teaching these specific behaviors. Oh, I meant to, I meant to mention, so the different qualities of level A, uh, I have these black arrows that point them out. So in uh, Family Picnic, there's a simple pattern and it's highly predictable. A lot of these, aside from family, the words are one syllable. And the pictures match the text, as you can see in the page that says we play. So conferring at level B, the skills and behaviors uh, remain the same, um, but you can continue on working on different strategies and as, as children progress. Uh, the qualities of uh, books at level B change slightly, however. So there's an introduction of a multisyllabic word in breakfast on the first page in uh, what time is it, which is a Fantas and Pinnell level B. There's an addition of another pattern, as I note out on the page uh, below. So it says, what time is it? It is time to wake up. So unlike the level A, 
now there are two lines of text in level B and readers will be working on just reading more words on a page. Conferring at level C. Um, this uh, is cleaning day, which is a Fountas and Pinnell uh, level C. And you can see here the illustrations provide less support. So the dog is laying on the chair and um, you can see the, uh, the characters in the back. So it's, it may be clear to children reading this book that, it's, that it might be messy inside this room, but the presence of the dog, it may be uh, not confusing, but they just have to figure, you know, they have to now move on with pictures that don't necessarily match the exact text. Then there's letter sound relationships. We have the presence of um, the double vowel and sweep with two E's. And then the pattern changes on each page. So the, te so the verbs on each page, we sweep the floor, we wash the dishes, we dust the table. Nothing is alike, which, is really, which really varies from levels A and B. So now I'm going to talk about the teaching resource pages when, uh, when you confer with readers at levels A, B, and C. As you can see here, there are a lot of different uh, sections that you can look at more for more information. You have moving from left to right across a page in a two-page spread, one-to-one -one matching, using pictures in the text to read, read sight words automatically and accurately, retelling, summarizing, and synthesizing, inferring, and using letters along with meaning and syntax. So I am going to highlight using pictures and the text to read, retelling and inferring. I find that, found that in my teaching that these were some of the more difficult strategies to teach students and they happen over time. You're, you know, you may not be using pictures and the text to read, but retelling and inferring are skills that you're going to be working on continuously with, with students as they grow as readers. So these are really great base, um, base, knowledge and skills for when you're working with students on these different behaviors. So each of the pages looks like this. It's really clearly organized and I found it super helpful to look at the different aspects of uh, the information that's offered here. So you have the research column. So this is the opportunity for you to identify or relate to the scenarios that uh, are presented in the document. So for example, it says, ask the child to read aloud. Do the words that the child reads make sense with the picture? Then that's just a hypothetical scenario. Then the observation, the child reads a word that contradicts the picture, e.g. reads red bus when the picture depicts a yellow bus. And that happened to me, that happened to uh, readers that I worked with all the time. So you can say, make sure your words match what you see in the picture, and that's your coach. And then again, you can adapt these and use them how you wish, but these are just uh, simple suggestions. And then there's a demonstration. So these are different ways that you can engage with specific VPOP books, and then you can apply that to whatever leveled readers that you're working with. So now I'm going to highlight from What a Street at Fountas and Pinnell Level C with this specific skill and behavior using the pictures and text to read. So in the first uh, spread, it says, what a messy street, pick up the cans. So for example, when the child reads garbage instead of cans, which I could see happening because it does look like garbage, and perhaps they may have skimmed over cans, you could say, does the picture match what you read? Make sure your words match what you see in the picture. And then perhaps that provides the child an aha moment so the child goes back and reads the correct word. When the child gets stuck and they can't move on past a specific word, you can give them these type of reminders. Check the picture and reread from the beginning. Sometimes children and students who are beginning to read just need to simply start over from the start. And that's okay. Children can also check the picture. You can also say, check the picture, then try the words. Or lastly, check the picture. What would make sense? 
You can tailor these to your liking with whatever you think works best for the students. Uh, but these are just simple uh, and concise suggestions to use uh, when you're working on using the pictures and text to read. Next is retelling, summarizing, and synthesizing. Again, it follows the same type of format with the column for research, the column for observation, the column for coach and prompt, and then the column for demonstration. And again, this is free and this PDF is free and downloadable for you to use. It'll be sent out when we send the link to view the webinar, but it's also available on our website. So I'm highlighting here train ride Fountas and Pinnell level C for retelling, summarizing, and synthesizing the prompts that you can use with your students. When asked in the first spread, it says, we are ready, we hug. When asked about what happened in the story and the child says, I don't remember. Just as an aside, this I think is quite happens quite frequently, especially with retelling and summarizing. It's a difficult skill, and especially when students are beginning to read and they're concentrating so hard on reading the words, sometimes the meaning of the book just escapes them. I mean, that happens to adults. That happens to me sometimes. I'll read a passage and I'll have no idea what I read, so I have to go back and reread it, but it's a skill that really takes time to develop, and it's it takes a lot of cognitive effort and it's our duty as educators and caregivers and librarians to help children get there. So we can say, let's look back at the pictures and the words to remember what happened in the story. Children can use visual aids to help them with retelling and summarizing. If they need to look at the pictures and, and come up with, and that's how they come up with a statement about the book, that's great. You can always remove that scaffolding over time as the child continues to work on the specific strategy. You can remove it after, after one book or after several books. Just depends on the individual child's behavior and reading, uh, reading skills. You can also say what happened in the beginning, middle, and if you think this type of prompting and scaffolding would help students. This also gives a, separate, a, a different kind of uh, support as opposed to the visual. It gives them an idea to think about the book in terms of the beginning, the middle, and the end. When asked what the story was about, the child says a train. Technically, that's correct. Sometimes, to, um, I found that sometimes my line of questioning when I would ask students what the book was about, they may not have understood or they may have just said one word and, and for example, it would be train in this case, and that's correct, but we want them to elaborate and come up with a statement. So sometimes we have to be clear in what we're looking for. So you could say, tell me something from the beginning. What about the middle, the end? Again, similar to bef before the beginning, uh, when I said um, earlier, giving them that kind of support with beginning, middle, and end, and separating the different parts of the book so that they can come up with a retelling statement. You can also say, check the words and pictures in the book. It is about a train, but there was certainly more that happened in the book as well. And then lastly, can you say what happened in the story in a sentence? Perhaps that word sentence triggers children's brains that, oh, I'm gonna, I actually have to say a full sentence in order to talk about what was in the book. You could also say something like that. So the last uh, skill and uh, strategy that we're going to be working on is inferring. So um, here you can see, again, it follows the same exact format, and there's all of these different scenarios that you can pick and choose what you read, what's relevant to you, uh, what makes sense to you, what you connected with. Now I'm featuring Batter Up. Uh, this is a Fountas and Pinnell Level B. I found that this was really suited towards and working on inferring with, with young readers because of the facial expressions. Despite the little amount of text on the pages, there's a lot of inferring that goes into this book when you want to talk about it with, with students after. So inferring at this, uh, at an early age is all about getting at the character's emotions and what the character is feeling. Specifically because the text doesn't actually say 
the girl was surprised. It's, you know, you, the uh, students and children have to figure that out by using their prior knowledge and what they see on the page to make sense of it and to technically at the end make an inference. So when you ask the child about the character's feelings in here, she says, I don't know. You can point to several different elements on the page that may help them make, get to making an inference. You can say, look at the character's face. How do you think she is feeling? That's giving them a concrete way to look at the picture and say, oh, wow, you know, she's feeling surprised. They may not have known how to answer, but if you give them a specific way to get there, that's, well, that, will, that could possibly help them. Then you could say, imagine what the character is thinking, or how would you feel if you were in her situation? These are all different prompts and questions that you can ask that, uh, that would be helpful to your students or help them get to the inference. Um, in the second part, when you ask, um, in the second spread here, when you ask the child to connect the story to his or her own life, and he or she is unsure how to answer, you know, say you say, oh, have you ever experienced something like this? You can think of something that happened, uh, you can say to this child, think of something hap that happened to you that's almost the same. Sometimes readers are reminded of something um, from their own life, even if it's not exactly the same thing. So here I gave an example. One time I was running after a soccer ball to score a goal and I was nervous. I bet she's feeling nervous too. Sometimes modeling and giving them that way in to making the inference allows them to make that connection is that's what you're actually asking them to do. So I have this page here for, dedicated towards English language learners. There are different sections throughout the document that you can read about for working with English language learners specifically. And the tips and strategies that I'm going to be giving here not only work for English language learners, but they work for, for other students as well, not just ling English language learners. But these are, these are really helpful for students who may need more verbal support and the use of visuals. So when you're working on using the pictures and text to read, you can pr always pre-teach words that you know the students might be unfamiliar with prior to reading. So you can print them on a whiteboard or a word wherever they can see it and work on that specific word prior to when they start reading. So that way they're fully equipped to engage with the text at hand. You could also provide a separate word wall that's tailored to their needs. As you're working with, um, with the English language learner students, creating a specific word wall for them is really, will be really helpful when they're reading on their own. And you might not be there for conferencing. So for retelling, summarizing, and synthesizing, drawing pictures is great, um, and acting out the story and what happened in the beginning, middle, and end is also an option. And these are also great for students who have, who have um, who may have problems expressing themselves um, or, you know, the drawing pictures is always a great way as a scaffold to work on retelling and then, you know, having them talk about the picture might be able to help them with, this, with a summary statement. And then lastly, inferring. I loved putting speech balloons and sticky notes above characters' heads uh, when I worked with English language learners because that visual aid just gave them an idea, oh, okay, that's what it looks like with, when you're supposed to be thinking about what the character might be saying. And I provide an, an example here for um, Cold and Hot, which is a Fountas and Pinnell level A. So his facial expressions are really cute and funny and you can have a great time with students coming up with what he could possibly be saying about bundling up. I wanted to next talk about English language learners and Bebop books uh, because we are so um, we are so dedicated to providing quality level books by uh, Spanish educators and literacy experts. Um, again, as I said earlier, the Spanish level um, is done in house um, and it's done separate from the level of its corresponding English version. Just because that they're they're the same. Um, 
just because it's the Spanish version of the English version does not mean that they're going to necessarily be the same level because the vocabulary and the sentence structure vary. That means that they are not literal translations. They are culturally authentic, high quality translations. And they are, the Spanish editions are not secondary. They are equally as important and published with great care. The Maspinata imprint of Biba books were originally written in Spanish, and then they were adapted into English. So you can really use them with confidence in your classroom. You can go on our website to learn more about Maspinata, but I've shown two examples here. I love recess in my day. Those are uh, some of our Maspinata books, and you can look at the whole list, but they were originally written in Spanish, which is incredibly unique in this field of level reading and literacy. This is an, uh, a, these are two spreads from Mas Piñata, Meet My Family. I just wanted to give you another example. So, Conoce a mi familia. Uh, you have, este es mi papá, esta es mi mamá. And I personally like how the, role, role, the traditional roles are reversed here. So, you have the father seems to be preparing food, and then the mother is uh, on a computer. Um, and so you have the Spanish version and then the English version, Meet My Family. The last part of the document is called, in the PDF, is called Conferring Record Keeping and Checklists. These, I think, are really helpful. You don't have to start from scratch, and all of the tips and uh, strategies and reading behaviors are listed in. Um, in these sheets. So you can see at the far left, so you have reading love to write across a page, one-to-one -one matching, um, and then the rest. And then you have the child's name at the top, and then date taught slash comments. So you can use these um, for each individual child. Of course, you can make this longer or adapt it however you want. Um, but I just found it was really uh, clear and it's something that you don't have to create. Um, you can literally just print it out um, and then levels A and B and level C are, pr are printed at the top for easy visibility. And then we have a conferring checklist. And then this is probably a whole group setting or an entire class. And then the, um, the different behaviors are, are listed in columns to the right. Um, there's a note-taking system down at the bottom. Of course, you can use whatever note-taking system you find appropriate or what you use. I know all teachers are really different in how they take uh, how they take conferring notes, and conferring notes are really hard. I always really struggled with it um, in in jotting down abbreviations and everything. But I think that these are really great, and they're free and available for you to use. And then again at level C. So where can I find Bebop books? There are several different areas where you can find Bebop books. When you go to our advanced search on our website, you'll see reading level and then uh, guided reading. You can search by guided reading A to Z with the drop down arrows. And then underneath that, you have Spanish guided reading. If you're looking for Spanish books, you can look for them that way. On the far right, you see a box that says imprints. You can also select Bebop books. If you're just looking for Bebop books, you can also look there as well. Then you can go to bebopbooks.com. Under uh, this, you can also access it if you go to our website, leanwillbooks.com, and then underneath imprints, there's a drop down menu and you would select Bebop books because it's our leveled uh, reader imprint of Lean Low. Then you can read more about Bebop books, more, um, more information. Um, you can see here there's the Mas Piñata. You can learn more about um, that imprint of Bebop books there. So that's also available to you. And then again, you can find Bebop books at Leveled Reading. Again, these are all housed on our website. So I'm just showing that there are several different avenues and ways that you can get to Bebop books and find out more about them. So when you click on Leveled Reading, there are all of these different collections that are suited for your needs. So if you're working with early emergent leveled reading, you can click on that and there are all sorts of collections. We have collections at all different Bebop levels. 
Um, if you're just interested in A books, we have collections for that. So you can look at all sorts of collections on, um, on this leveled reading page and in many other places on our website. So now um, I'm going to take the time to um, answer any questions that you might have or feel free to share some of the different conferencing strategies that you do in your classroom and I can um, share them out loud. I'm happy to hear from, from you all um, what you thought or if you, if you do this but you do it differently, I'm happy to hear. So. Okay, so follow us on social media. We have all of these different channels, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and our blog. Our blog is a great resource um, and source for information. Um, specifically on leveled reading, we have um, a series on, on uh, guided reading. We also have a series um, where you can find out more about Mas Pinata. There's also uh, a culturally responsive teaching um, blog series that are, that's great. So there are a lot of different ways that you can learn more about how to use diverse books and specific teaching strategies on our blog. And finally, you please reach out to me if you have any questions. I'd love to hear from you. Um, you can reach me at kpotter at leanlow.com. So I really appreciate you taking time out of the busy day to join me. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. So thank you so much and have a great night.